We love to think that right now we're the most advanced civilization that's ever been, but there's much to be learned from our ancient ancestors. Some of their achievements are truly remarkable. We need to open our minds and accept that there have existed on the earth civilizations with technology that while different from our own and in some areas possibly not as advanced had developed some engineering techniques that are as great or even greater. Fortunately the ancient books in India's Rama Empire have been preserved unlike those of China, Egypt, Central America and Peru. Many of these ancient nations are now either desert wastelands swallowed by thick jungle or literally at the bottom of some ocean. Yet India, despite devastation by wars and invasion, managed to maintain a large part of its ancient history. For a long time, Indian civilization was not believed to date from much earlier than about 500 BC, only about 200 years prior to Alexander the Great's invasion of the subcontinent. In the past century, however, the extremely sophisticated cities of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa have been discovered in the Indus Valley of modern-day Pakistan. The discoveries of these cities forced archaeologists to push the dates for the origin of Indian civilization back a thousand years. A wonder to modern-day researchers, the cities were highly developed and caused leading archaeologists to believe that they were conceived before they were built a remarkable early example of city planning. Even more remarkable is that the plumbing sewage system throughout the large city is superior to that found in Pakistan, India and most Asian countries today. So what do we know about ancient Indian technology? There are many stories of flying vehicles coming from ancient Indian sources, written texts that have come down to us through the centuries. There is no doubt that most of these texts are authentic. Many of them are well-known ancient Indian epics themselves and there are literally hundreds of them. The Indian Emperor Ashoka started a secret society of the nine unknown men, great Indian scientists who were supposed to catalog the many sciences. Ashoka kept their work secret because he was afraid that the advanced science catalogued by these men, culled from ancient Indian sources, would be used for the bad purpose of war, which Ashoka was strongly against having converted to Buddhism after defeating a rival army in a bloody battle. The nine unknown men wrote a total of nine books, presumably one each. Book number one was The Secrets of Gravitation. This book, known to historians, it dealt chiefly with gravity control. It is presumably still around somewhere, kept in a secret library in India, Tibet or elsewhere. Only a few years ago, the Chinese discovered some Sanskrit documents in Lhasa, Tibet and sent them to the University of Chandragarh to be translated. Dr. Ruth Reina of the university said recently that the documents contained directions for building interstellar spaceships. Their method of propulsion, she said, was anti-gravitational and was based upon a system analogous to that of Lejima, the unknown power of the ego existing in man's physiological makeup. A centrifugal force strong enough to counteract all gravitational pull. According to Hindu yogis, it is this lajima which enables a person to levitate. Dr. Reina said that on board these machines, they were called astras. By the text, the ancient Indians could have sent a detachment of men onto any planet, according to the document, which is thought to be thousands of years old. The manuscripts were also said to reveal the secret of Antima, the cap of invisibility and Garima, how to become as heavy as a mountain of lead. It is said that at the time of Atlantis and Rama, the Mediterranean was a large and fertile valley. This ancient civilization, predating dynastic Egypt, was also known as the Osirian civilization. The Nile River came out of Africa, as it does today, and was called the River Styx. However, instead of flowing into the Mediterranean Sea at the Nile Delta in northern Egypt, it continued into the valley and then turned westward to flow into the deepest part of the Mediterranean Valley, where it created a large lake and then flowed out between Malta and Sicily, and south of Sardinia into the Atlantic at Gibraltar, the Pillars of Hercules. When Atlantis was destroyed in a cataclysmic upheaval, this cataclysmic change in the Atlantic slowly flooded the Mediterranean basin, destroying the Osirians' great cities and forcing them to move to higher ground. This theory helps explain the strange megalithic remains found throughout the Mediterranean. 
It's an archaeological fact that there are more than 200 known sunken cities in the Mediterranean. Egyptian civilization, along with the Minoan and Mycenae in Crete and Greece, are in theory remnants of this great ancient culture. The civilization built huge earthquake-proof megalithic structures and had electricity and other conveniences common during the time of Atlantis. The temples of Malta show many instances of gigantic stones drilled or chiseled through their centers to make a doorway or portal in the middle of the monolith. This is an incredible feat of skill and artisanship. The only other place on the globe that possesses monolithic portals of this size is Tiwanaku in Bolivia. The underground temple called the Hypogeum and the overground temples of Malta and Gozo are among the oldest man-made structures on our planet. These temples are totally unique and different from anything else found in the ancient world. They are more comparable to Renaissance cathedrals with their multiple side altars and apses for special devotions and altars to the saints. Even though they are the oldest, their complex geometry and layouts place them among the most advanced of all megalithic buildings ever constructed. These temples contain multiple chambers which served as side altars, complex temple additions, corbelled stone roofs founded upon steady rubble infill between interior and massive exterior walls of giant stones which serve to buttress the heavy thrust of these stone domes. Most of these domes have collapsed inward as their rubble attests, but several rows of corbelling still exist to define the base of these advanced domes, which may have terminated in an oculus as seen in the Pantheon at Rome. Like Atlantis and Rama, the Osirians had airships and other modes of transport, often electrical in nature. Also, the mysterious cart tracks of Malta, which go over cliffs and underwater, may well be part of some ancient Osirian tram line, possibly taking quarried stone to cities that are now submerged. Probably the best example of the high technology of the Osirians is the amazing platform found at Baalbek, Lebanon. The main platform is composed of the largest hewn rocks in the world, the famous ashlars of Baalbek. Some of the individual stones are 82 feet long and 15 feet thick and are estimated to weigh between 1,200 and 1,500 tons each. Many ancient cities are said to have existed at the time of Atlantis and Rama in the Uyghur civilization of the Gobi Desert. The Uyghur civilization is claimed to be the primary colony of Lemuria. It was developed by some of the most ancient of Turkish tribes in the Gobi Desert, which formerly inhabited a part of the Chinese Tartary, Xinjiang. James Churchward claimed he had found evidence of the lost civilization of Mu. Churchward believed that the primary colony of Mu was the great Uyghur Empire, with Karakoto being its ancient capital. The civilization was supposedly at its height around 15,000 BCE, occupying what's now the Gobi Desert. The Uyghur today live primarily in the Xinjiang Uyghur, an autonomous region of China. Though the Gobi is now a parched, landlicked desert, these cities were ocean ports. Edgar Cayce once said that elevators would be disclosed in a lost city in the Gobi Desert, and while this has not happened yet, it's not out of the question. Vimanas and other advanced devices are said to have been in use in the Uyghur. On October 5, 1926, while traveling in the Humboldt Mountains of Tibet's Kokorna region, Russian explorer Nicholas Rorick reported, members of his expedition saw something big and shiny reflecting the sun, like a huge oval moving at great speed. Crossing our camp, the thing changed in its direction from south to southwest, and we saw how it disappeared in the intense blue sky. We even had time to take our field glasses and saw quite distinctly an oval form with shiny surface, one side of which was brilliant from the sun. Another description by Rorick was of a shiny body flying from north to south. Field glasses are at hand. It's a huge body. One side glow in the sun, it's oval. Then it somehow turns in another direction and disappears in the southwest. Perhaps the craft was an ancient Vimana coming from a still active city using Uyghur technology that exists in northern Tibet or the Gobi Desert. Significantly, it's claimed that the elders of Lemuria, known as the 13th School, moved their headquarters prior to the cataclysm of the uninhabited plateau of Central Asia, 
that we now call Tibet Here they supposedly established a library and school known as the great white brotherhood For instance the great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu born in 604 BC talked frequently of ancient masters in their profound wisdom he wrote the famous book Tao Te Ching probably the most popular book ever written in Chinese When he finally left China near the close of his very long life He journeyed to the west of the legendary land of Si Wang Mu According to ancient Chinese. This was the headquarters of the ancient ones Could this have been the great white brotherhood and the 13th stone of Mu? as in Mu in Atlantis construction in South America was on megalithic scale with polygonal construction techniques designed to make the massive walls earthquake proof Earthquake resistant walls were important all around the ring of fire ancient Mu Homes and communal buildings were built out of megalithic blocks of stone Because of the high regard the culture had for the well-being of future generations and the value they placed upon the gradual sustained growth of the community Structures were built to last for thousands of years a house built of cement wood and plaster wall will last a hundred years or so if kept up Witness the megalithic construction of Egypt Malta Peru These buildings are still standing today Cusco the ancient capital of Peru which was probably built before the Incas is still inhabited today after thousands of years Indeed most of the buildings in downtown Cusco today incorporate walls that are many hundreds of years old Whereas more recent buildings constructed by the Spanish are already crumbling Only a few hundred miles to the south of Cusco lie the fantastic ruins of Puma Punku, high in the Altiplano of Bolivia Perhaps the biggest mystery involving Puma Punku is how ancient mankind Managed to transport these huge blocks of stone from quarries within 10 to 100 kilometers How did they manage to achieve this type of precision cuts? And how did they place the blocks in such a perfect manner? Engineers and constructors around the world today cannot answer nor replicate these achievements done by ancient mankind thousands of years ago. Archaeologists cannot conclude and answer how were these amazing blocks of stone transported. Some of them believe that it was accomplished by the large labor of force of ancient Tuanaku. Several theories have been proposed as to how this labor force transported the stones from the quarries to Puma Punku, but these theories remain speculative. The pinnacle of the Puma Punku site is the Gateway of the Sun that depicts Viracocha coming out of a type of stargate. The carving is created from a single 12 ton stone. Scattered about the site are many monolithic stones that are presently cut and routed in multiple levels. With perfect angles and straight lines many of these blocks are cut in perfect interlocking shapes a feat far beyond a primitive civilization that used stone and bronze hand tools These ruins of Puma Punku are massive megalithic constructions and yet they look like they've been tossed about like toy building blocks What kind of cataclysmic upheaval could have done such a thing? Here's the kind of megalithic construction meant to last for thousands of years Yet the 100 ton blocks have been torn asunder by mighty geological forces The South American continent was suddenly and violently thrust upward during some kind of cataclysm most likely a pole shift a Former sea level canal can now be seen at 13,000 feet in the Andes mountains as possible evidence for the scenario many ocean fossils can be found near Lake Titicaca the lake is even inhabited by the only known freshwater seahorses Mayan pyramids are found from Central America to as far away as the Indonesian island of Java The pyramid of Suka on the slopes of Mount Lawu near Surakarta in central Java is an amazing temple with stone stelae and step pyramid that would match any of the jungles of Central America the pyramid is in fact virtually identical to the pyramids found at the ancient Mayan site at Awaxac Tun near Tikal The ancient Mayans were brilliant astronomers and mathematicians whose early cities lived in agrarian harmony with earth They built canals and hydroponic garden cities throughout the ancient Yucatan Peninsula Some of the Mayan glyphs were allegedly radionic type insect control devices that broadcast an etheric vibration of the targeted pest in James Akan's book lost secrets of Maya technology 
and exciting documentation of exploration research forensic engineering and virulent reconstruction he found evidence of lost technological achievements that enabled the Maya to construct cities towering above the rainforest water systems with underground reservoirs miles of paved jungle tracks and the longest bridge in the ancient world he also explains how Maya engineers built multi-story buildings that were not exceeded in height until the first skyscraper erected in the US in 1885 how they invented the blast furnace 2,000 years before it was patented in England and developed the vulcanization of rubber more than 2,600 years before Goodyear. Ocon explained how the grand cities of the Maya civilization were constructed of a strong, durable building material that resisted the prying roots of the jungle, earthquakes, and hurricanes for over a millennium. This material was cast in place concrete that was very similar to modern structural concrete. The most popular building material in contemporary construction the cement produced by Maya technicians was fabricated in a similar manner as today's Portland cement the Maya used limestone as the raw material and produced thermodynamic reactor using a self-consuming timber assembly like a blast furnace which elevated the temperature of the timber fuel to 1600 degrees Celsius this temperature melted the limestone and produced the chemical reaction that converted the raw material into cement This cement was the base material for producing the cast in place concrete that built the Maya civilization Edgar Casey mentions the Mayas and their technology in one reading as For a description of the manner of construction of the stone We find it was a large cylindrical glass as would be termed today Cut with facets in such manner that the capstone on top of it made for centralizing the power or force that concentrated between the end of the cylinder and the capstone itself. It's believed that an ancient hall of records resides somewhere in the Mayan region, probably beneath an existing pyramid complex, in an underground tunnel and chamber system. Some sources say this repository of ancient knowledge is kept in quartz crystals that are of exceptional quality and capable of holding large amounts of information in the similar manner as a modern CD. Ancient China, known as Han China, is said to have come, like all civilizations, from the huge Pacific continent, Mu. The ancient Chinese are known for their sky chariots, their geomancy, and the jade manufacture that they shared with the Mayas. Indeed, the ancient histories of the Chinese and Mayas seems indelibly linked. Anthropologist makes a good case for a Taoist influence coming to Central America by showing Shang Dynasty symbols and motifs The yin-yang is the most famous But there are many more and then relating them to known Mayan art and sculpture Jade was of particular importance to the Shang Chinese So far the source of Chinese Jade has not been pinpointed much of it may have come from Central America even the source of Central American Jade is a mystery Many ancient jade mines are believed to still be undiscovered Anthropologists suggest that Chinese voyages to Mexico between 500 and 300 BC may have been related to Taoist trade the secrets of longevity The ancient Chinese are often said to be the originators of every invention from toilet paper earthquake detectors paper money cannons rocket technology printing methods and thousands of other clever and high-tech items in 1959 archaeologists in China discovered belt buckles made out of aluminum thousands of years ago Aluminum is generally processed with bauxite and electricity While the existence of Chinese pyramids is of course very interesting It's strange how we in the West are largely oblivious that they exist What's even more fascinating is how ancient legends tell of an enormous 1,000 foot high jewel capped white pyramid which is even larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza. This white pyramid was supposedly spotted by explorers even as late as the mid 20th century, though its existence was never widely acknowledged. The first known sighting of this legendary white pyramid was supposedly in Shangxi province in 1912, when a travel agent and trader, Fred Meyer Schroeder, accompanied by a Buddhist monk guide, claimed to have spotted a group of pyramids one of which was significantly larger than the others. It was even more uncanny than if we had found it in the wilderness, wrote Schroeder. 
but those pyramids were to some extent exposed to the eyes of the world but still totally unknown in the Western world Schroeder estimated the pyramid to be a thousand feet high with 1640 foot long sides making it much larger than the Great Pyramid in Egypt which is only 450 feet high as the story goes his guide informed him that the pyramids were at least 3,000 years old and that knowledge of them was recorded in ancient documents and told in well-known legends the second alleged sighting of this legendary pyramid was made by US Army Corps pilot named James Gaussman he was flying from China to Assam India in the spring of 1945 when he reportedly saw a huge white jewel cap pyramid in the southwest of Xi'an I flew around a mountain and then we came to a valley directly below us was a gigantic white pyramid it looked as if it were from a fairy tale the pyramid was draped in shimmering white it could have been metal or some other form of stone it was white on all sides what was most curious about it was its capstone a large piece of precious gem like material I was deeply moved by the colossal size of the thing he wrote from such ancient texts as the Bible and the Ethiopian king of Kebra Nagast we have tales of the high technology of ancient Ethiopia and Israel the temple at Jerusalem is said to have been founded upon three gigantic ashlar blocks of stone like those found at Baalbek Lebanon today the revered Temple of Solomon and Muslim Dome of the Rock Mosque exist on this site whose foundations apparently reach back to the Osirian civilization like much of the later Phoenician construction the building at the temple to hold the Ark of the Covenant and the temples in Ethiopia are the last of the megalithic stone constructions the massive temple Mount built by King Solomon on the ruins of earlier megalithic temple was made to house the ancient relic known as the Ark of the Covenant the Ark of the Covenant is said to have been an electrical generator box which housed several sacred objects including a solid gold statue from earlier cultures that's called the Holy of Holies this box and gold statue were said to have been removed from the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid in Egypt by Moses during the period of the Exodus many scholars believe that the Ark of the Covenant as well as other ancient artifacts were actually electrical devices some of which were worshipped in temples as oracles the Bible recounts how certain unauthorized persons would touch the Ark and be electrocuted where's the Ark today the truth is that after the destruction of the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem no one knows for sure where the Ark of the Covenant ended up the Ark disappeared without a trace so the place where it might be found assuming it had been preserved in the first place remains today one of the great enigmas not only of history but particularly of archaeology but what is certain is that almost 45 million Ethiopian Orthodox Christians are convinced that the Ark of the Covenant was taken about 3,000 years ago to Aksum in northern Ethiopia well there's no solid historical evidence the circumstantial evidence is compelling the island of Tana Kuros is still home to devout monks who are certain the Ark was there for centuries and openly display relics which apparently came with the Ark from Solomon's temple there are also traces of what seems to have been a tabernacle that is a shrine erected to house the Ark then there's the issue of the immense pride and seriousness around the chapel in Axum where the Ark is said to reside only one man the so-called guardian can lay eyes on the Ark and he is in fact forbidden from ever leaving the chapel grounds he will worship at the Ark until his dying day at which point his successor named by him will take up the mantle the sheer severity of this task and the generations of devoted guardians who have given their lives over to the calling implies that something of huge importance does exist within the chapel in the words of writer and priest Lionel Fanthorpe I would not be in the least surprised if at some future date those with expert scientific knowledge to say yay or nay would find that the ark in Axum is the one from Solomon's temple according to various esoteric sources the first civilization arose 78,000 years ago on the giant continent known as Mu or Lemuria and lasted for an astonishing 52,000 years 
it's sometimes said to have been destroyed in earthquakes generated by a pole shift which occurred some 26,000 years ago at approximately 24,000 BCE while Mu did not reach as high a technology supposedly as other later civilizations it is nevertheless said to have attained some advanced technology particularly in the building of long-lasting megalithic buildings that were able to withstand earthquakes however it was the science of government that sometimes said to have been Mu's greatest achievement supposedly there was one language and one government education was the keynote of the Empire's success and because every citizen was versed in the laws of the universe and was given thorough training in a profession or trade magnificent prosperity resulted a child's education was compulsory to the age of 21 for him to be eligible to attend citizenship school this training period lasted for seven years so the earliest age at which a person could become a citizen of the Empire was 28 James Churchward in books such as the lost continent of Mu 1931 wrote that the motherland stretched from the Hawaiian Islands to Fiji and from Easter Island to the Marianas Churchward considered the non modal site on Pohnpei Island one of the seven sacred cities of Mu today its ruins sit on a swampy lagoon filled with mangrove trees rising about 30 feet in height black volcanic stones weighing many tons are stacked crisscrossed like a child's frontier fort it's one of the more enigmatic sites in the entire Pacific yet archaeologists cannot explain how it got there indeed stone monuments of mysterious origin dot the entire Pacific from Japan's spectacular underwater site at Yonaguni to cryptic petroglyphs on Hawaii's big islands Manahuni ditch on Kaui is built from dressed and fitted stone slabs like something ancient Romans would have erected very different from typical Polynesian style and of course there's Easter Island centerpiece of many Lemuria theories it's hundreds of colossal stone statues and written language point to an advanced culture yet it appeared on the world's most remote spot why the legends of Easter Island speak of Hiva which sank beneath the waves as people fled while Samoans called a similar place Bolotku it was stocked with trees and plants bearing fruits and flowers which were immediately replaced when picked on Boludo men could walk through trees houses and other physical objects without any resistance the Maoris of New Zealand still talk about arriving long ago from a sinking island called Hawaii a vast and mountainous place on the other side of the water there's yet another puzzling piece of evidence a map of the lost continent published by the Lemurian fellowship corresponds almost exactly to boundaries of the Pacific plate but the map first appeared long before geologists even knew of the plates existence their detailed map places the capital just north of present-day Maui near the center of a vast continent stretching from Australia to the Rocky Mountains it's said that when the continent of moose sank the oceans of the world lowered drastically as water rushed into the newly formed Pacific Basin the relatively small islands which had existed in the Atlantic during the time of the Lemurian civilization were left high and dry by the receding ocean the newly emerged land joined the Poseid archipelago of the Atlantic Ocean to form a small continent this continent is called Atlantis by historians today though its real name was Poseid Atlantis is believed to have taken technology to very advanced stages well beyond what exists on our planet today in the book a dweller on two planets first dictated in 1884 by Philos the Tibetan to a young Californian named Frederick Spencer Oliver as well as in a 1940 sequel an earth dweller returns there is mention of such inventions and devices such as air conditioners to overcome deadly and noxious vapors airless cylinder lamps tubes of crystal illuminated by the night side of forces electric rifles guns employing electricity as a propulsive force rail guns are similar and a very new invention monorail transportation water generators an instrument for condensing water from the atmosphere the Vilex, an aerial ship governed by forces of levitation and repulsion the sleeping clairvoyant Edgar Casey in a reading spoke of the use of airplanes and of crystals or firestones 
used for energy and related applications. He also speaks of the misuse of power and warnings of destruction to come. If we take for granted that Atlantis did exist and that humanity originated from there, what does that mean for us? It throws a wrench into the mechanics of various religions for starters by questioning their myths but at the same time supporting the Great Flood myth. It changes how we look at other ancient societies knowing that they had possibly originated from Atlantis and then somehow lost or forgot their technology. There was a loss of cultural and technological memory. It suggests that we may have had a higher state of technology 14,000 years ago and that we started over roughly 12,000 years ago. And judging by the timeline of Cro-Magnon Man, 36,000 years, it may take us another 20 years to reach the level of technology that was used to build the pyramids. It questions what around is permanent. Metals melt and rust away and can be salvaged and turned into other things. Glass breaks easily. Plastics slowly degrade. Bones, if not fossilized, also disappear. Wood rots. Stone is one of the few things that last, especially if they're too big to be moved by less technological cultures. What have we built in the last 2,000 years that's permanent? The Great Wall of China is brick and will erode and fall apart. Steel buildings will rust away into nothing. The Hoover Dam, one of the few things that can be seen from space, is perhaps one of the few buildings that will still be there in 10,000 years. And what if all of mankind's modern inventions are nothing more than reinventions of the past? Reinventions from a time when a different people inhabited the planet and disappeared mysteriously from the face of the earth. Thanks for watching and don't forget, share, like and subscribe if you like this documentary.